we have just enough time to get to do what the Lord has designated us to do today. Hallelujah. Because we began with the fellowship with the Son of God. Hallelujah. And I thank God that we had the opportunity to really worship, you know, as it seems to be our practice here in Chogi is we tend to practice whatever it is we're about to uh, teach. So I love it. It's, it's very practical, you know, because I'm going to tell you some things and I'm going to give you information. And I'm trusting God that by the Holy Spirit, you'll be imparted with something as well. And uh, as well, that practice of fellowshipping with the Lord, with Jesus, is very, very important. So let us read together First John chapter 1, verse 3. I'm going to jump back and forth at different points just so we can get to where we need to get to in the next 15 minutes. Um, please go on YouTube, type in Revealed Word Broadcast or Facebook, same, same thing. Um, look for, so we have a playlist of all the topics. So for the, the grace, mercy, um, now the month of love. So there's a playlist for our, that includes the prayer mountain on, on um, Saturdays, it includes the Sunday messages, it includes the Wednesday faith impartation. So that way you can just follow along the whole theme of the month in one playlist. And you can go back and do mercy. All, it's all there. Uh, so make sure you do that so that way you're following along in the spirit. Let's read together. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's a beautiful thing. Is that a beautiful thing? Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that special? Isn't that beyond whatever adjective I can come up with right now? Fellowship with whom? With whom? Come on, church. Fellowship is with whom? And the Son. Wow. Say, my fellowship. I will fellowship. I will continue in fellowship with the Father and the Son. Hallelujah. You will fellowship with the Father and the Son, but we do so in the Spirit. God is a man or he is a spirit? Which one is it? God is a spirit. And so those who will worship him must worship him in what? In spirit and truth, right? So then we continue in the fellowship of the spirit by, you kickstart it by one practice called speaking in tongues. Say speaking in tongues. So you're going to speak in tongues and you're going to fellowship with the Father and the Son just by letting the Holy Spirit speak through you. Amen. You speak in tongues. Jude chapter 1 verse 21 says, keep yourselves in the love of God looking for for the mercy. Let's go there. Jude one twenty one. Hallelujah. Keep yourself in the love. So Pastor Dave um, already went extensively last week talking about preparing your heart. Sometimes you may feel blocked you feel, I don't feel, the, I don't, I'm, I'm struggling to fellowship with the Spirit, with, with, with the Father right now. That usually means there's something troubling your heart. So there is a preparation of your heart for fellowship. And then there's the practice of fellowshipping with the Lord. And you do so by number one, speaking in tongues and 
Number two, you do so by fellowshipping with the word. Hallelujah. And the, the Lord was, the Lord has been teaching us, teaching his church at the Spirit Clinic about focus. Do you know what focus means? Focus means to look and stay looking. Amen. The fellowship of, or with the Father, the fellowship of the Spirit is looking unto Jesus. Is looking. We just read Jude 121 says, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's you focus on him through the word of God. Somebody say Amen. So those are the two main things that we're going we're gonna to get to. I wanted to hit that first, and then we can now start from the beginning. Let's go to Ephesians 3, uh, 17 to 19. We'll read together. Eighteen to nineteen. Amen. The knowledge of the love of Christ. This is Paul's prayer to the church that we would understand the love. That we would understand the love. So I started off by talking about fellowship. So everything I'm going to say now is the purpose of the fellowship. If you don't, if you struggle to understand the love of God, it means you need more fellowship. When a couple hasn't spent enough time together, then you feel an emotional disconnection. You say, we haven't spent time. I don't know if you still love me anymore. You know? Love has to be expressed so it can be felt. And the Father is expressing his love and is calling us to fellowship so that we can understand that love. And we already read Jude 121. It says, keep yourself in the love, which means that there is a possibility for one to move out of the love. There's a possibility. So it is through our own choice, deliberation, to engage in fellowship that we stay in the love of God. Someone say stay, stay. In the love of God. So that our daily communion and fellowship is with the word and the spirit. The Holy Ghost is our coach. So when you fellowship, you will lean on the Holy Spirit. You have to trust the Holy Spirit. And the spirit of God is one who guides us because it's through the spirit that we fellowship with him it's only by the Holy Ghost that you will be able to fellowship with God it's only by trust and by faith do you understand Because the Holy Ghost had to convince me. When Pastor David said a few weeks ago, he was like, you, cannot, you can't love with your mind, you can't love with your heart. And I know that to be true objectively. But I was like, you know what? But your mind has to be engaged too. Your mind has to be engaged. So I was like, Holy Spirit, show me. And then Papa mentioned it again. And I was like, okay, it sounds like God was really serious about this heart thing, about you only <laughs> about loving with your heart. So I'm like, so what is it? I'm like, but your mind, because I immediately when he mentioned it, the scripture that came to mind was Paul saying, with my mind, I serve. So I said, okay, all right, well, love, serve. Your mind has to be engaged. What does that mean? And yes, of course, your mind is, your mind is yours. Your mind has, has to be renewed. But I think what God wanted me to understand was that when it's of the heart, it's by faith. And it's by the Holy Ghost. So you have to lean on the Holy Ghost and you have to ask him. 
You have to ask the Holy Ghost for help and say, Holy Spirit, help me. You say, Holy Spirit, teach me. Holy Spirit, show me. Holy Spirit, take over my words. Fill my mouth. Because it's the Holy Ghost that will actually teach you how to worship God. It's the Spirit of God that will actually teach you the words to say, how to actually speak to the Father. What God wants to hear from you is the word that came from His Spirit. Amen. You don't want to burn strange fire. If you spend the next three years listening to R&B music, you might find yourself singing some songs using the words that you learn from R&B songs, saying that you're singing a love song to God. Because we know the joke, right? All you have to do is change the, the word from baby to Jesus, and all of a sudden it's a worship song. So how do you know you're worshiping God? How do you know? How do you know? It's by the Spirit. Somebody say the witness of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is a real being. You can stop being now. <laughs> the Spirit of God is a living, he, he's, he's a living being. He's active. He will teach you. He will tell you what to do. He will show you how to do it. He's your coach. He's my coach. He's our coach. It's very important. There is no such thing as fellowship without the understanding, without hearing the voice of the Holy Ghost. You have to trust him. You have to begin to develop your relationship with the Holy Ghost, with the Spirit of God. It is in the Holy Ghost, by your spirit man. Because the Holy Ghost, if you, are, if you are born again, if you receive Jesus, the Spirit of God dwells inside your own, your own spirit. You have the Holy Spirit and you have your own, your own spirit. You are one. You are born again. And every single thing that the Holy Ghost will teach you, will give you, is in that spirit man. So then when you commune in your spirit, then you can begin to act out the things of the spirit. Amen. And that's why speaking in tongues is important. If you don't know how to speak in tongues yet, you must open your mouth and begin to speak in tongues. And you say, Holy Spirit, fill my mouth and speak in tongues. You speak in tongues. And so, Holy Spirit, I receive your tongues. I receive your word, the heavenly language. As I open my mouth, Lord, fill it. And you're going to speak. That's why prayer mountain is important on Saturdays. Because when you, when, you, when you are with other people who speak in tongues, it helps you. There's a corporate anointing. There's an atmosphere. There's a fire. There's a, there's a grace available. Very important. Amen. Now, let's jump to uh, John chapter 5, verse 19 to 20. Now, let's read. Hallelujah. Amen. This is what it means when you say you see God. It's in the place of fellowship where you can say, I see God. We know that no man has seen God with their eyes physically. But your spirit man dwells daily, constantly in his presence. Your spirit man sees God. Your spirit man is with the Father, face to face, in Christ Jesus. Amen. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? Oh, man. Papa's going to have to <laughs> have to teach this 
So a lot of a lot a lot of you young ones guys see some of the young ones your faces are like what does that mean? <laughs> it's like when they ask Jesus born again what does that mean? <laughs> it's like I'm have a teacher all over again. <laughs> I know some of us know what that means, um, <laughs> but um, by faith you will understand in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's go to Jeremiah 33 from verse two to three in the AMPC. In the AMPC. Jesus knew the love that the the Father had for him. And he dwelled daily in the presence of God. Everything he did is what he saw the Father do. Everything he did. He says, he said, my judgment is not of me. My judgment is everything I hear the Father say is what I say. So the the way that you can also, the the only way you're also going to reproduce and show the fruits of the Holy Ghost is by fellowshipping with him. And so that way you see what he does. Your spirit man sees what the Lord is doing. And that way you can also say, as my father works, so I work too. That only comes by fellowship. So that everything you do, you just know that this is what God is doing at this time. You flow. There's a flow of the spirit. It's not everything that you do with your mind. That's why God challenged me so much because I'm a very mind person. I think a lot. I'm very... Logical. I'm thinking. I'm, I don't know if you. I don't know if you're. You're the same. But I'm always thinking. I have theories and theories. I'll be. I'm. I went to my drive as I'm reading scripture. I'm writing down. I have different notes like this. Writing down because you have the Google Docs. So I have different notes. I have theories that I'm putting together, as though the Word of God was some kind of matrix that you can kind of connect to and to. But for me, I enjoy it. I love to study. I'm going. I'm looking at the Greek version. I'm looking at these words and that words. It's fun. It's beautiful. I'm doing it with the Holy Ghost. You know, it's learning. But that is not the same thing as fellowship. You know, that's not the same thing as fellowship. That's not the same. Fellowship is, is with the spirit. Some, you just have to suspend the mind. Suspend what you know. Because the world, you're, because that's, in, in the mind realm is where the worries are. That's where the worries are. That's where your anxiety is, the bills, everything. You can't fellowship with God when you're worried about the bills and you're worried about what am I going to do and what's, what's going to happen today. You can't do it. You suspend, you suspend those things. You just let your heart flow with the Holy Ghost. And whatever the Holy Ghost does in that time is the right thing. Whatever you do in that moment is correct, is right. And your mind may never understand it. I'm sure some of us here have practiced it. You've known when you just walked in the spirit and you did something that made no sense. And the Lord confirmed it. That's walking in the fellowship of the spirit. As the Lord works, so you work. Amen. It's a beautiful thing. God has called us to a deeper, deeper relationship so that, so that he can show us secrets. God said he wants to show us secrets. The secrets of life. The secrets of the treasures of, of this world, where the, where, the, where the treasures are hidden, where the goodness, where the fatness is being stored. I'll show you. You're looking for, <laughs> like Indiana Jones, you're looking for something. You're going to the, into the what does he go, the hills, mountains, caves. <laughs> there, there's, there's, there's treasures, there's places, there's secrets, there's people, there's places where God has put some things. There's ways to navigate this world that God will easily show us. You're looking for self-defense. You want to buy a gun. Well, Christ didn't need no gun. He said, I walk in the day. <laughs> so put, P- Peter came with a knife. He said, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't need this. I don't need your sword. <laughs> you know? So whatever it is that you think you need, you trust, right? What God wants to give us is or what God wants to show us something different. Let's quickly read that or round up here. Who formed it to establish it? That's for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The NLT says, this is what the Lord says, the Lord who made the earth, who formed and established it. 
whose name is the Lord. He says, ask me and I will tell you what? Remarkable secrets that you, you do not know about things to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, show me your secrets. May I know you more. May I know more about you. May I know the ways you have designated for me. May I see the path that you have lit up for me. As you spoke, Father, with Abraham, and you said, shall I do this thing without telling Abraham? Oh, Lord, I desire the same fellowship. Show me the way. Holy Spirit, show me the way. Hallelujah. And let's rise up and as we uh, read John 17, 21. We started off this season with uh, Isaiah 55, verse 3. It says, incline your ear, come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Incline your ear. And now the Lord is asking us to look and see. Amen. It's not by mistake that at the Spirit Clinic we're talking about focus. This is where we have this is where we're going to develop the spiritual discipline of maintaining our focus on the Lord, setting our eyes on Him. Amen. Psalms 91, 14 says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on eye because he has known, because he has known my name. Spiritual discipline of focus. Someone say spiritual focus. Spiritual focus. Spiritual discipline. Focal strength. There, there's, there's the mental, the character strength, and then there's the spiritual discipline of focusing and setting your eyes on Jesus and seeing him in communion. Hallelujah. Let's read John 17, 21. That what? May be one. As our Father art in me, I am thee. Let they also be one Hallelujah. Say, Lord, Lord, remove distractions. Remove distractions. Remove all distractions. Remove from me. all distractions. Anything, Anything that will distract me will distract from me. keeping my focus, from keeping my focus on, you. on you. Lord, remove Lord, it. Remove Holy, Spirit, Holy Spirit, help me. Help me. Train my focus. Train my focus. To Keep my focus to keep my, to focus, keep my eyes, keep my, my spiritual eyes my spiritual on, Jesus, on Jesus, the author, the author and finisher of my faith. Of my Jesus, faith. Jesus, I see you. I, see I you. look unto I you. Look you. As I look into the word, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help me to see help Jesus. To see Jesus. Uh, hope, open my mouth, O oh Lord, uh, that I may speak your mysteries. Uh, Hallelujah. Spirit Say, Lord, teach me to fellowship and commune with you. Commune with you. The lifestyle. The lifestyle. Yes, Lord. Grant me grace to separate time with you. With you. Uh, I receive grace. I receive uh, grace. Holy, Spirit, uh, Holy Spirit, help me. Uh, help me. You are my comforter. Uh, comforter. You bring to my remembrance to my uh, all, all that I have learned, all, learned. all that you have taught me, all, uh, all that the Father has taught me. Uh, you bring to my remembrance. Uh, Holy Spirit, uh, bring to my remembrance this week uh, the word. Uh, bring to my heart uh, that word uh, you have deposited. Uh, bring to my mind uh, the truth of Jesus. Jesus, uh, that I may commune with you daily. Uh, I walk in communion. Uh, the grace uh, uh, walks with me uh, in the name of Jesus. 
and finally say, Lord, satisfy me uh, in the place of worship, in the place of fellowship. Reveal your love to me uh, in a greater dimension. Uh, I will know your love. I will understand your love uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you have not yet received Jesus, and even if you're watching online at this time or you will watch this recording at a later date, don't take this moment for granted. This is it. There's no better time than right now to come to know the love of God and to surrender your heart to Jesus and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you will know his love. You will still feel his love. And you can touch his love. Just say, Jesus. Jesus. You've loved me so. You love me so. Father in heaven. Father in heaven. You love me so. You love me so. So much. So much. That you sent Jesus. You sent Jesus. To, die to die. For my sins. For my sins. While I was sinning. While I was sinning. You still love me. You still love me. And you sent him. And you sent to him. deliver me deliver from me. the power of the from sin, the power of sin. And, from the power of death. and from the power of death. Jesus, Jesus. thank you oh, for, the for the freedom that you purchased for me purchased and you gave to me. And you gave to me. Because of your sacrifice, of your I am free from sin. Free from and sin. anything that is holding me back holding from me back. knowing the Father, from knowing, from God. knowing God, Thank you, Jesus. Uh, you delivered me. Uh, you delivered me from it all. You delivered me from death. Uh, and you delivered me from sickness. Uh, you delivered me from disease. Uh, you delivered me from the devil uh, and from death. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, your blood was shed. Uh, and I am justified. Uh, I am righteous now by your righteousness. Uh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I receive the gift uh, of your Holy Spirit. Uh, Holy Spirit, uh, teach me to walk daily in fellowship with the Father. In Jesus' name. And finally, if you need healing in any part of your body, you can place your hand on that part of the body now. Lord God, Father of life, Father of lights, uh, there's nothing you cannot do. I will thank you, Father, for the life, the healing life of Jesus Christ that flows from this altar that flows in this house. Thank you for the healing life, the ministration of the angels of God, the ministration of the blood of Jesus uh, over that body now. We command healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the life of God flow and manifest upon this body now in Jesus' name. Amen. Therefore, by the blood of Jesus and by the life of God. Anything in that body that does not belong, that was not designated or ordinated by God, uh, you are cursed your roots out in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Die at this moment. Amen. Amen. 